Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things tech and finance. And in this video, I'm going to be going over machine learning metrics for classification and regression type problems. You know, at the end of the day, all you really care about is how well the model actually performs. You would typically judge the model versus itself, and most importantly, you would judge the model compared with other models. And you can apply a variety of metrics to evaluate how your classification or regression type algorithm is actually performing. And there's not really just one metric to use, it can be a multitude of metrics to use when you are evaluating your model. And just having one score may not be telling the entire picture. So let's say that your overall model accuracy is 90%. Is that a good score? Is that a bad score? So let's put this into perspective. Let's say that you're having a binary classification problem. You have, uh, let's say, 99% of your observations are under class A and 10% of your observations are under class B. And you're trying to find the difference between the two classes. Now, having a 90% accuracy rate sounds good on paper. However, uh, if you were to just train the model just on those specific observations with no imputations or randomizations uh, of subsetting, then that will actually look pretty bad because the overall model itself would just be providing a 99% accuracy score uh, because in its training phase, it's just going to be assuming that all the observations or 99% of the observations are going to be associated with class A. So how would we even remedy this issue? Well, the answer to that is a confusion matrix, not a confusion matrix as a metric per se, but the applications of a confusion matrix can go a long way. Now, for the simplicity of this video, I'm only going to be sticking with a 2x2 two two confusion matrix. However, the same principle applies with the most basic confusion matrix with other confusion matrix that are n by n. All you really have is that you have four cells. You have true positive, false positive, true negative, and false negative. Now, these four cells can pretty much tell you all you really need to know about this particular classification model. A true positive rate, otherwise known as sensitivity, is defined as true positive divided by the true positive plus the false negative. You can interpret this statistic as a proportion of true positive observations with respect to all other positive observations. A true negative rate, otherwise known as specificity, is defined as true negative divided by true negative plus false positive. Similarly to the true positive rate, the true negative rate is the proportion of true negative observations with respect to all negative observations. A false positive rate is defined as a false positive divided by the false positive plus true negative. You can interpret this as a proportion of negative data observations that were mistaken as positive observations with respect to all negative data observations. With these important rates in mind, we can now refer to the most famous classification type metric to use, and that's area under the curve, or the awk rock curve. The rock awk curve is the relationship between false positive rates and true positive rates. The importance of this graph is that it portrays the performance of the model at different thresholds when distinguishing between classes. The receiver operating characteristic, or the rock curve, is a line that helps visualize this relationship. You can think of the rock curve as the representation of the different probabilities of the model at different thresholds. Now, the area underneath the rock curve is the area under the curve, and this is the primary metric to observe. The more area under the curve approaches one, the better the model is at distinguishing between classes. If the area under the curve is near zero, then the model cannot distinguish among different classes, and this model, you should probably throw it away. And last but not least, related to the applications of the confusion matrix, is the F1 score. The F1 score is the true accuracy of the given model because it takes a harmonic mean between the precision and recall and you can use this f1 score to compare amongst a variety of different classification algorithms and whichever one has the highest is usually the one that you end up choosing now the components that make up precision and recall is not to be confused with the rates themselves they are actually the observations or the cell observations within the confusion matrix and with this in mind, precision is defined by true positive divided by the true positive plus 
false positives, and recall is defined by the true positives divided by the true positive plus false negatives. Sweet, now let's go over the types of metrics to use when you are actually working with regression type problems. Regression type metrics are a lot more straightforward, partly because regression type problems are notoriously difficult to actually model. And there's a variety of different ways why it's really difficult, but this is just a metrics video. So instead of a typical classification type model where you're trying to predict whether or not, let's say this sentiment uh, tweets is positive or negative, Typically, when you're working with regression problems, you're trying to predict a numerical value, such as stock market pricing. Now, when using regression type problems, it's always a good idea to have a base model to compare your results with. This is a little bit different from the classification type approach because it's pretty clear cut as to whether or not that particular model is good at distinguishing between different classes. However, when you are working within the regression type atmosphere of machine learning, it gets pretty difficult to judge whether or not that particular model is good for that particular data set or not so good. Uh, this is because the metrics that we are using are very, very relative. So let's say we have a mean squared error of like 100. Is that good? Is that bad? We don't really actually know unless we actually compare that particular output with other outputs of different models. And from there, you can then go ahead and try to find better models that have a better score. There are three very popular metrics to use when you are using regression type algorithms, and that's mean squared error, root mean squared error, and mean absolute error. Mean squared errors is the average of the squared differences between the true and predicted observations. This punishes models that have large differences and awards models that have smaller differences. You can also use this as a loss function to minimize when using fancier models. The units of the metric is squared units, which can confuse many people who want to know what these metrics mean when determining how off the model is compared with the true observations that are coming in. This is where the root mean squared error comes in. All you really do is that you take the square root of the mean squared error and thus you have root mean squared error. Typically, you would use mean squared error as a loss function and the root mean squared error to evaluate and report performance. Now, the last metric you should use when you are utilizing regression type algorithms is the mean absolute errors. Mean absolute error, or MAE, is the average between the absolute value of the true and predicted observations. This metric is quite intuitive. The further the true value is from the predicted value, the higher the mean absolute error will be. A perfect model is with a mean absolute error of zero, which is nigh impossible in the real world. Now, of course, I didn't really go into depth about the more niche areas of machine learning. This is just the broad strokes of what type of metrics you should definitely be aware of when you are working with classification and regression type models. And the more niche areas can consist of like, let's say like the Jacquard algorithm or the cosine similarity, so on and so forth. There's a lot more minute uh, metrics to use when you are going to be going into more niche areas of machine learning. But I hope that you enjoy this video. Uh, make sure you leave a like if you learned something or if my explanations were pretty good. Uh, if you like what you saw and you want to see more of this related stuff, make sure you hit that subscribe button and Thank you for making it this far and I hope to see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching.